Hey now, and welcome to the KC Toy Reviews. We are here today with IG-11, not to be mistaken with IG-88 from the original Star Wars trilogy. No, again, this is IG-11 from The Mandalorian on Disney+. And as always, Hot Toys has delivered a quality figure right in front of us. So, let's go ahead, fine comb those details, and dive right the hell goddamn in. Alright, so, it probably is worth noting that Sideshow did come out with an IG-88 years and years ago, which looks pretty similar to this. Obviously, the quality on this is tenfold at this point. However, if you are a nut with the IGs, you do have the opportunity to own the IG-11 in front of us and an IG-88 by Sideshow. It is still out there at a reasonable price. I think it's still in the 300-ish range. But... We don't give a crap about IG-88. We give a crap about IG-11. And man, we were invested in that robot. I'm not the only one that got teary-eyed when he terminator 2 it up at the end. There's no way I'm the only one. And you know what I'm talking about. Now, I'm probably going to butcher his last name. And I'm definitely going to butcher his last name. I don't even know how to pronounce it. But Takiti Takada, whatever his name is. He directed Thor. He's directing the new Thor. Absolutely amazing director, uh, but he was the one who voiced IG-11 in the show and, again, did a really great job at it. And I do believe that IG-11 ended up being a standout character in The Mandalorian by the end of that series. Now, as you can see detail-wise, it's pretty fantastic. What I see is a weathered, rustic look. You know, literally rust and weathered, gunmetal. Everything that you can see throughout this robotic body looks fantastic. And of course, we should note this is not a die-cast body. It is a plastic body. And that's truly unfortunate. Had they gone die-cast with this thing, I mean, freaking, it would have looked nuts. It would have felt amazing and you just would have had a lot more longevity to it. And I get it. Maybe the investment wasn't there. They didn't want to go a die-cast route. But of course, that's not to knock it. It still looks fantastic. It still has a decent weight to it. There are some pieces like on the shins down below where I did feel like it felt like die-cast cast like a metal-ish piece but nonetheless it really is great and I also will note probably while we're in this frame articulation is insane on this guy um, this arm on mine is already getting a little bit loose so as I'm about to boast about articulation as we can see watch this here it starts to fall down so that's unfortunate this arm seems like it's kind of loose right outside the box this one's a lot more stiff and holds up but again articulation wise beyond this piece that's sagging down which is probably just which is probably just bad luck on my side that I got one that was a little bit looser you truly do have a great range in the uh, elbows and the shoulders the hands if you're familiar with like a term Terminator or stuff like that. Each individual finger is uh, articulated, so the way he holds onto the gun was really cool because I really was able to form fit it around that um, handle there. So yeah, really great articulation. I think you could pull off some truly memorable scenes from the show. I'm just a little bit disappointed that my arm on this side is a little bit loose already. Now, right here is probably one of his most iconic poses, in my opinion, and truly just my opinion, because there's probably a hundred iconic poses, especially when he's holding the child and stuff. But this is where I remember him from season one, episode one, in that camp where he was just blasting people. He had one pistol pointing one way, he had another pistol pointing the other way, and he was just flipping and flopping back and forth, destroying the whole camp. And I believe even in the midst of it, he hit the Mandalorian by accident. But nonetheless, this is a crazy pose, the fact that we can't and pull stuff like this off really just shows again articulation on this guy is next level for a robot the only kind of quote-unquote knock that i would have on the articulation the midsection there's no bending forward or backwards there's really just circling around you have a, a circle joint here and there so basically you can just twist him at this portion here and then at the bottom portion uh right here you can twist him but other than that, he's just flap and forward. There's no pivoting back and forth on that frame there. And before we take a look at the piece of crap stand that I'm about to tear apart, 
Um, the legs look great. I know it's kind of weird zooming in on the legs, but I thought it was cool. The little wires that we have around the sides here. Again, the weathering, great articulation, ball joints at the bottom. So really, you could pivot those feet each and every way you th could think of. And just a true robotic look. The paint scheme that they have on this guy is amazing. And I am a sucker for a weathered kind of body on, on figures. So just the fact that they went this route, it looks great. This looks like an old school assassin droid that has been around for a while. <sighs> Hot toys. I mean, what's, what's going on? Is this a joke? I mean, did, did you guys just roll some dice around a table and say, hey, let's just include this stand with IG-11 and slap a plaque on the front of it? You know, on top of that, the fact that, again, we are still including this printed foot tattooing stand that you've had around for years boggles my mind. And lastly, this is just a terrible option for IG-11. A waist grabber? I mean, with the bandolier and the way his waist is and stuff, not only is it kind of a pain in the ass to get around him, you have to bend these out pretty well to get it around him. And then there's just a fear that it could scuff up or scratch the paint around his waist. I just don't know what the hell these guys were smoking when they said this is the stand we're going to include. I mean, this should be flat for sure. I don't know why we have bumpy feet. These don't match his feet. It, so it makes no sense that we have these Stormtrooper printed feet stand with IG-88. I just, I'm almost baffled by the big piece of crap stand that this thing came with. With. And being that he's a robot and has flat feet, there should have been a flat surface, not a bumpy surface that they included with this thing. So I just, I think that they, they didn't give a crap. They just included this thing because they have 5 million of them in their warehouse and they're still trying to get rid of them for some reason. I don't know why we're doing this sand trooper standstill hot toys. Just stop it. Please just stop it. I'll, I'll do whatever you want. I'll mop your floors for, I would. I really mean that. If they were close to me and say, hey, Ryan, you come over for the next, I don't know, eight weeks, mop our floors every Saturday for, for three hours, and we'll get rid of these Tatooine stands forever, I would do it. I would do it in a heartbeat for the community. I would mop those goddamn floors so well to get rid of this piece of crap stand. Get this thing out of our existence, this stupid Tatooine stand. Anyways, I'm getting aggressive because it's it's driving me nuts that they still include these Tatooine stands. I don't know what the hell these guys are thinking. Just please, Hot Toys, going forward, no more Tatooine stands. Just please, no more Tatooine. I know you just spray paint them different colors every time. Just stop it, please. <laughs> and there we have it. I to the G to the 11. Now, before we slap a score on this guy, some final closing notes. Well, what you see is what you get, plus that piece of crap stand. The bandolier that's around him, uh, you can take that on and off. It had a nice Velcro strap on the back, so if you don't like it on there, very easy to take that off of there. And then, of course, the two guns that you have there in hands, and one last time, that piece of junk stand that he came with. But of course, the figure itself is one badass figure that represents a character from one of the best new Star Wars shows that we've seen in a long time. Being that the Mandalorian is now on hiatus until season three, well, we have this fantastic figure to start building our collection and hold us over until that point. Now, I believe that IG-11 was a fantastic character, uh, ended up helping us with Yoda, destroyed waves upon waves, waves of troopers and enemies beyond galore, so he has earned his spot on our shelves. And then pair that with him being voiced by a, at this point, legendary director. I mean, this guy just has a amazing portfolio of movies and TV shows. Probably one of the, is gonna, at one point, he's probably going to be one of the best of all time. And it just rounds out to be this incredible character from an incredible show. Hot Toys knocked it out of the park with the paint scheme. And yeah, it wasn't die cast, but if we take a couple steps back, the untrained eye, it looks metal. They've done such a great job at it. that It looks metal. It looks like a robot, so I'm not going to gripe on it too much. And we don't even need the stand. I mean, he stands fantastic on his own. It really has a great sturdy feel to him and a flat bottom to those feet. So there's no balancing act on this guy. We don't need to use that piece of crap, copy and paste, tattooing 
main stand anymore. We're going to stand up. We're going to we're going to boycott that stand. We're not going to use it. We're going to go out. We're going to go to Rocky Funko. We're going to go to Stony Stands. We're going to go to Display Heroes. We're going to get one of those custom stands because we don't need this junky Tatooine footprinted stand anymore. We don't need it. And with all that said, you know, as far as a score on this guy, I mean, what comes to mind, it's going to be pretty high because there's not too many flaws, as always, with Hot Toys. There's just not too many flaws. The arm was a little bit loose. It's not die cast. And the stand is a piece of junk. So as far as a score, I'm going to roll in with an 8.6 out of 10. Now, I do suggest this. If you are a fan of the Mandalorian, I think that having this on your shelf is really going to add some presence. He has some height to him. He's going to stand over and basically tower over most of the other characters on your shelf. So, with an 8.6 out of 10, I would say that this would add some really great shelf presence. If you are a fan of the Mandalorian, if you are a fan of Takata, Takiti, whatever the hell his name is, then you should be a fan of IG-11. And with all that said, that's going to be it for us here today at KC Toys. IG-11, 8.6 out of 10. Hope if I do this too fast, it doesn't destroy this guy. See you guys next time. Bra! Man. Oh.